I'm Misa Ramirez, and this is Books on the House. And today we're talking with Christine Fletcher, author of Ten Cents a Dance, her most recent work. Welcome, Christine. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm very excited to talk with you and thrilled that you're here on Books on the House. And I would love for you to just go ahead and start by telling us about the the time period really behind Ten Cents a Dance. It's just at the beginning of World War II. So start, it starts a couple of months before World War II. But how did this story come about, Ten Cents a Dance? Well, it really started with a family story. Uh, my mother had told me the story of her aunt, uh, Aunt Sophia, who my mother did not even find out about until my mom was like 11 or 12. It turned out Aunt Sophia was a black sheep of the family. She had been declared dead to the family uh, by her father, who was um, a very old-fashioned uh, Sicilian man. And we don't know what she did, but at the age of 15, she was kicked out of the house and declared dead to the family. And my mother didn't know any of this until Aunt Sophia showed back up uh, after my mother was born. My mom was about 11 and uh, just reappeared in the family's life. And she was you know, married and very respectable. And she was my mother's favorite aunt uh, for many years. And then Aunt Sophia died uh, when my mom was 17 and Sophia was 36. And my mom found out that Sophia actually uh, was not married. Uh, she was not respectable. She was actually um, had, had made up uh, an imaginary life for herself to present to the family but in reality, she was a mob mistress. She was a mistress of a very prominent Jewish mob boss. And she was basically a kept woman. Um, and she had made up this whole secret, um, or she had made up this double life so that she uh, could reconnect with her family in, in, and be a respectable woman. Um, so my mom told me this, and, and I was in my 30s when I found out and my mom told me one of the things that Aunt Sophia had done was she had been a taxi dancer. Well, I didn't know what that was. And of course, I was immensely fascinated with this whole story. You know, to my mother, it was this huge, deep, dark family secret. Nobody was supposed to know. Uh, at the time my mother told me the story, she was the only person left alive who had ever known Aunt Sophia. Everyone else who had known her had passed away, and nobody ever talked about her. And my mom told me about her, and I just thought this was fascinating. So my mother, my poor mother, she's like, you know, deep, dark family secret. I'm like, oh, this is fabulous. I'm going to write a book. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I started researching taxi dancers, um, also called Diamond Dance Girls. And they were girls who were hired by dance halls to dance with men for money. And they could make a, actually a lot of money um, doing this compared to, say, working in a factory or working as a maid. And it was a lot of fun, you know, at least it would look fun, you know, if you were a kid at that age, at that time, you know, instead of working in a factory, you got to dress up in evening gowns and go out and dance to music and it, it would look very glamorous and exciting. So I built this novel around a girl who, um, who becomes a taxi dancer. One of the things I found out in my research was that a lot of taxi dancers, especially if they still lived with their families, um, kept what they did secret from their families. And so I thought, how how would that work? How would you be a teenager working at a dance hall and keeping it secret from your family while you're still living at home? So because they were I, typically teenagers. They were typically teenagers or in their early twenties, yeah. And and most of them kind of aged out of that by the time they were in their mid twenties because newer and younger girls kept coming in. Um, and so, yeah, these were, these were young, young girls, uh, many times. And how would you do that? And as I started wondering about that, the character of Ruby Jasinski was, was born. So I decided to take just the taxi dancing aspect of it and, and, and tailor it for young adult. Because wow. that's the part I was really fascinated with was this whole idea of this secret double life and how you would do that. And, uh, it's won some awards. Is that right? It has. It's. I've, I've been really honored um, and and um, uh, just thrilled that it has received the recognition that it has. Um, the uh, Young Adult uh, Services branch of the American Library Association chose it as a top ten best book for young adults uh, for 2009. 
uh, I was just floating on cloud nine when I heard about yeah, that. Congratulations, that's really awesome. Thank you. Um, the Virginia um, Library Association also chose it um, as an honor book for their Thomas Jefferson uh, Award, which is an award for a historical novel for kids or young adults. So I was really thrilled about that. Uh, I, I've just been, I've been really pleased with the recognition it's gotten. And then um, Tallulah Falls came first. Was that your first novel? That was my first novel. And yes. So, um, well, when did you want to know that you want? When did you know you wanted to be a writer? I guess first of all. Well, I've always loved to write, but I had other things that I wanted to do. I was really focused on becoming a veterinarian, uh, so I, you know, went through my undergraduate, went through veterinary school, was working full time as a veterinarian. Mm -hmm. I was always an avid reader, and I have been all my life. And I kept picking up these books and reading them and going, "Oh, I can write better than this." And I realized, you know, it's time to stop saying that and either do it or shut up about it, yeah. <laughs> you know, one yeah. or the other. And so I started taking some writing classes and I just, I got bitten by the writing bug and I just have never, really never looked back. Do you still practice your veterinary medicine? I do. I practice two days a week. I work for a very wonderful and understanding uh, veterinary practice. Um, that uh, helps me arrange my schedule as I need for my writing and so right now I work uh, two days a week and the other five days a week I spend writing. That's, that's great. That's great to have that flexibility and get out of your writing studio I'm sure. Yes, <laughs> very much. Real life experience. Um, and so how did you decide to write for teens or in the YA genre versus writing for adults? Yeah, yeah that, was, that was a complete accident. Uh, I wrote my first novel, Tallulah Falls, and I thought I was writing adult mainstream fiction. Mm -hmm. And my agent, when when came time to get an agent, and I, I was um, signed with my agent, she also was representing it as adult mainstream fiction. But she told me from the beginning, she said, a, a book with a teenage protagonist is a hard sell in adult fiction. So we'll see how it goes, but you know this this could be tough to do. And she was right. We came close at two publishing houses, but both times the marketing departments came back and said, can't do it. Cannot sell a book about a teenager to adults. Um, so my agent came back to me. She's a very wise and resourceful woman. And she said, um, why don't we try the young adult market? And I was kind of embarrassed to admit I did not know there was a young adult <laughs> market. So she said, look, go to the bookstore, find some young adult books, read them and get back to me. And so I did, and I was blown away by these books. Um, I picked up about half a dozen, and I just read through them. I just devoured them, and I thought, these, this is some of the best writing I have read in months. Um, even with all the reading I do, this is fabulous. I, would be, I, I felt like I would be honored to be on the same bookshelf as these people. So I called my agent and I said, yes, let's go for it. And she sent the book out and within two weeks we had two offers. Wow. So, yeah, well. <laughs> wow, that's, that's an incredible story. And so you'll continue writing for y, the YA market. I really love writing YA. Uh, it turned out that the things that I'm interested in exploring um, are, are kind of tailor-made for YA. I, I have always been fascinated with questions of identity, of how people come to see themselves, how people make up their minds about themselves, because we all see ourselves in certain ways. And and a lot of that we go through as young adults when we're, we're trying to forge our, our, our own identities, separate from what we've been told, you know, all our lives by our teachers and our parents and our siblings or whoever. And, uh, and so that fascinates me. And, and for me, that's that's my focus in YA. Well, and I think the YA market has grown so much that so many adults read it, probably for the same reason, because they're still exploring those, those same things, because it's the human condition. So, Absolutely, and I meet so many, since I started writing YA, I meet so many people, just co-workers and friends, who like, it's like, it's like a secret, they're like, you know, I, I actually read YA, you know, it's like this, you know, they won't admit to anybody else. <laughs> well, so real briefly, we have about 25 seconds, what are you working on next? My next book is uh, completely different from anything I've done before. It's a speculative fiction, um, so looking to see um, uh, how the world might change if something very key uh, changes in the world. Basically, quest novel, a uh, group of teens on a mission to save the world, told from the point of view of one of the um, 
not so loyal sidekicks who knows the quest uh, heroine, has known her all her life, the one chosen to save the world, and really thinks she's kind of a complete idiot. Thank you so much.